Hello, this is Rupinder Sial and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to take a brief tour into the history of genomics. We are going to go way back into the pre-genome sequencing days when biotechnology was not a hot word and people didn't know how to clone anything. So those are the days when we were just beginning to understand the complexity of eukaryotic and prokaryotic genomes. And that brings us to the topic of today's video that is cot curve analysis or cot value analysis also sometimes called as DNA reassociation kinetics. And this really revealed the complex nature of higher eukaryotic genomes. Okay, so let's get started with cot curve analysis. Now the phenomenon of cot curve analysis relies on the basis of this fact that when we denature DNA it goes from this double stranded DNA form which is the native double helix. The unwinding takes place and if we keep heating the DNA usually heating is the preferred method for denaturing DNA although you can use chemicals also. So when we unwind the DNA strands using higher and higher temperatures eventually the single stranded DNA helix is formed so two single stranded DNAs are there and if we allow them to anneal if we cool the temperature so there will be annealing that will take place so the separated strands can zip again together and form double stranded DNA. Now this simple fact was used to analyze composition of human genomes especially how much unique sequence is present in various genomes and that led to the whole analysis of cot curve analysis or cot value analysis. So let's see what is it all about. Now if we have a random genome, so let's say this is for example the complete human genome, the genomic DNA from human isolated from human cells. So let's say this is human genomic DNA. What will happen is if we just denature all of it, let's say there is one gene which is present as two copies in the human genome present on the two chromosomes. So one gene, two copies. It will have a really hard time to find its complementary DNA partner to form the double stranded DNA. On the other hand, if some sequence is present in a relatively high amount, for example as a repeat, then it will have a very quick time in finding a complementary partner. Maybe it will not be the same partner in the original DNA, but it is almost identical sequence. So it will reanneal very fast. And that is the basis of cot curve analysis. So the mathematical basis is fairly simple. I will keep it jargon free so that everybody can understand. So we are looking at change in C, which is the concentration of single stranded DNA. Because this reaction is dependent upon two strands of DNA coming together, this reaction shows double order rate kinetics. So it is dependent on second power of the initial concentration of the DNA, C squared. K is just the rate constant for this reassociation or reannealing reaction. If we integrate this over time, we get to this equation. So this is the mathematical derivation of it. Right? So we, if we integrate it, we get C upon C naught, which is the initial concentration of single stranded DNA. equals 1 upon 1 plus k up into c naught into t. Here t is the 0.5. So we are uh, interested in how much time does it take for 50% of the DNA to re-anneal. And if we rearrange this equation, so for example if we have c upon c naught equals 1 upon 1 plus k into c naught t, we can rearrange this equation if we say okay c upon c naught so c is 0.5 initial c naught was 1 so 
it becomes 0 0.5 equals 1 upon 1 plus k into c naught t 0.5 so this is the uh, time when 50% of the DNA has reannealed. You take this here to the left hand side, we get 0.5 plus, so 0.5 multiplied by 1 plus 0.5 multiplied by k into c naught t 0.5 equals 1. Now we'll take 0.5 to this side, it will become 1 minus 0.5, which is 0.5 again. And we will be left with 0.5 multiplied by k c naught t 0.5. This 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 will cancel. So k c naught t 0.5 equals 1 or c naught t 0.5 equals 1 upon k. So this is the derivation of initial concentration multiplied by 50% time that the time when 50% of the DNA has reassociated. Now this C0 multiplied by T.5 was collectively referred to as C0 T or cot. And this was plotted as a graph in a log basis. So here we can see the initial studies these were carried out in the 1960s by various groups especially uh, Robert Britton and Eric Davidson where they carried out multiple studies of various uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic genomes and did this cot curve analysis. And the units of cot is moles into second upon liter. So moles upon liter because of the concentration of DNA and second because of the time. So this is one of the results that they got. Okay, so here we have caught concentration into time. And on the y-axis, we have the percentage of DNA which is still in the single-stranded form. So here we have a nice curve which indicates how much time does it take and what is the uh, overall kinetics of this reaction. And when this 0.5 happens that's the 50 percent of the dna is present in the double stranded form that is the uh, cot value or the c naught t value now when they looked at multiple different genomes for example they looked at very simple synthetic made genome with for example poly u and poly a so this is just simple as simple as you can get you have just poly u poly a tracts which can just zip against each other. So very, very simple. The caught curve was very fast and it dropped off like crazy in very short amount of time. And as you increase the complexity of the genomes, for example, we have mouse satellite DNA here. So this was the repetitive portion of mouse DNA. A lot of repeats here. MS2, this is a phage, T4, another phage, E. coli, a bacterium, they followed different cot values. So these were almost related to how much complexity is there in the genome. And here we have another comparison with calf thymus DNA, another important source of DNA, but this is the non-repetitive portion. So here they have removed the satellite DNA. So what is happening here is you are only considering unique sequences in the DNA and because unique sequences will take long time to reassociate, the cot value will be higher as compared to E. coli or T4 which, will, which are much smaller and they are mostly composed of unique sequences. Further analysis showed that actually this picture is not so simple. If you take the whole genome so here in the previous figure we had calf thymus DNA just the non repetitive part or mouse satellite DNA which is the repetitive part but if we take the complete genome for example here in red we are shown bovine genome and E. coli genome. So E. coli genomes and bovine genomes or in general higher eukaryotic genomes showed a characteristic different curve. 
so e coli genomes they showed a rapid drop very simple because most of these genomes had unique sequences and very few repetitive sequences so e coli fit into this kind of curve where it, it was just rapidly sloping off whereas in case of bovine genome they had multiple parts so they had some parts which reassociated much faster as compared to others so this led the researchers to hypothesize that maybe the genome is not uniformly distributed in terms of how much uh, gene content is there maybe there are some portions of the genome which are very repetitive very simple in nature and others which are unique in nature and they are present in very few copies the ones present in very few copies they annealed very slowly so they are here non repeated sequences the ones which are re annealing very fast they are repetitive in nature so this was before genome sequencing before we had any idea about the content of actual genome before we even knew how much uh, genome information and what kind of how many genes are there this is before sanger sequencing before everything so this was a huge breakthrough at that time we could get some information about the content of the human genome and other genomes and analysis of human genome actually really revealed how true were these analysis in the initial phases of these studies in the 1960s and 70s it was hypothesized that okay maybe these are repetitive sequences maybe they have some uh, roles in gene regulation or some other roles maybe Uh, these are rna species which are transcribed but the actual truth was that these were just repetitive junk dna sequences most of the repeats so here we can see one of the analyses of human genome the content you can see that the protein coding genes the axons and the introns so if you can uh, if you consider only the coding portion of the genome that is only 1% but look at this one defective transposons and fragments these are retroviral sequences and other viral sequences which are not able to uh, move around in the genome but they are just left there as molecular fossils and these are huge part of the human genome so these are repetitive sequences form part of the human genome and cot curve analysis one of was one of the first studies to actually show that okay the Uh, higher eukaryotic genomes they are not so uh, uniformly distributed in terms of gene content there is much more heterogeneity much more repeat sequences are there so very useful in terms of a bulk analysis of eukaryotic genomes so this was my explanation of cot curve analysis and cot value analysis dna reassociation kinetics i hope you liked the video if you if you did like it please give it a thumbs up uh, do consider subscribing to my channel for more ed educational videos like this and let me know in the comments below whether you have studied cot curve analysis in your textbooks although it is rarely taught nowadays but still sometimes it is asked in the exam okay till the next time we meet take care and bye bye